The large number of globin gene mutations in the human genome has resulted in several hundred haemoglobin protein variants. Although many of these are unimportant clinically, some, such as haemoglobin S and haemoglobin O Arab, are associated with significant pathology. There are two main detection and analytical methodologies currently in clinical use haemoglobin electrophoresis and high pressure liquid chromatography HPLC. Although isoelectric focusing and globin chain electrophoresis are also available. This video concentrates on the analysis of haemoglobin variants by electrophoresis and uses the Helena Biosciences system. You can see their SAS1 Plus automated electrophoresis unit, the smaller unit on the right, coupled with the SAS2 stain and destain unit, the larger unit in the middle. You can see the stain and destain reservoirs on the left. Helena Biosciences produce a range of preformed gels for various analyses supplied in foil packs with the acid and alkaline haemoglobin gels being the appropriate ones for the separation of haemoglobin variants. Washed, packed patient red cells need to be lysed using the provided Triton X100 based lysis reagent to yield a released haemoglobin solution that can then be diluted to about 20 milligrams per mil. The white sample tray strips are produced for various formats of the Helena units with different sample capacities. The SAS1 Plus unit takes 12 samples and therefore the, strips need, the strip needs to be shortened as is being shown here before being inserted into the holder. The gel to be loaded in the next part of the presentation is an acid gel. That is one where the incorporated buffer normally has a pH around 6. Under the acid conditions, haemoglobin variants migrate variously from the point of application towards the anode or the cathode, and therefore the samples need to be applied in the middle point of the gel, whereas with the alkaline gel, with a pH normally in the range 8.4 to 8.6, the haemoglobin variants all migrate towards the anode, so the samples are loaded on the gel more to the cathode end. 35 microliter haemoglobin samples are loaded into the appropriate wells of the disposable sample tray strip. Here in close-up you can see the loaded sample tray. So for the alkaline gel we insert the sample strip into the upper slot and with the acid gel we would use the lower of the two slots. We've only loaded sample trays into both slots here to illustrate the alternative positions. 
The gel tray of the SAS1 Plus electrophoresis unit is then opened and the sample holder placed in position. Four hundred microliters of buffer is pipetted onto the heat sink to ensure good contact between the gel and the heat sink. The gel, in this case the acid haemoglobin gel, is removed from its foil, its protective foil and plastic pack, and carefully lowered into position. A clean Eppendorf tip can be used to finally adjust the gel position. The gel surface is then carefully blotted to remove any excess buffer and to ensure that when the samples are applied they enter the gel rapidly exactly at the point of application. The carbon electrode rods are placed in position on the gel buffer blocks at each end of the separating part of the gel again ensuring that the electrodes are in contact with the metal posts. The gel cover is then put in place. The samples now need to be applied to the gel using a sample comb. The bar protecting the sample application teeth is removed The comb is put in position. It only fits one way round. For the acid haemoglobin gel, the comb is located in the front pair of the two sets of slots. With the alkaline haemoglobin gel, the comb would be located in the rear pair of slots. The process from here is automated after programming the unit appropriately. Once the program is started, the sample comb loads with the samples and then applies, moves to apply the samples to the correct point on the gel. The comb then moves back to the sample tray, reloads and then applies a second aliquot of sample to the same gel position as before. The drawer then closes and the electrophoretic step starts. 60 volts for 22 minutes with the acid gel and 200 volts for 30 minutes with the alkaline gel. The sample comb is then discarded. At the end of the electrophoretic run, the display indicates that the run is finished. The gel drawer is opened and the gel cover and carbon electrode rods are removed.
together with the sample tray. The gel is then carefully lifted and using the gel slicer the gel buffer blocks are carefully cut away from the running gel. The gel on its plastic backing is lifted carefully and set in the metal holder of the stain destain unit. This holder with the gel is then inserted into the slot in the top of the SAS2 unit. Again this unit is programmable with specific stain protocols acid violet for the acid gel, acid blue for the alkaline gel and specific de-stain protocols for these two types of gel. Again the display indicates when the stain de-stain program is complete. The gel is then ready for visual inspection and may also be scanned to enable identification of weak bands and to obtain an estimate of relative band concentrations. The stained and dried gel film shown here is an acid gel with various haemoglobin variants. The result shown here is an alkaline gel, rather less than ideal as the gel has retained too much background stain. Haemoglobin A is in tracks 3 and 5, Haemoglobin A2 in track 4, Haemoglobin S is in track 7, and a mixture of A2, S, F and A are in track 8. You can see that even if the gel background were much lighter, visual inspection alone would almost certainly not allow you to distinguish all the components of the mixture in track 8. Next you can see the scans of each of the sample tracks with the protein concentration being displayed graphically. In each scan the anode is to the right and the cathode to the left. In this first scan here of track 3 you can see a strong fast running haemoglobin A band with a much slower running much weaker A2 band. Here in track 4 you can see a much stronger A2 band. Track 5 shows a strong fast running A band, this time with no A2 band. Track 7 shows a strong haemoglobin S band that runs between A2 and A. And in track 8, in the haemoglobin mixture, as we move from the slow bands to the faster bands, you can see that the scan has, I has identified a weak A2 band, a stronger S band and strong F and A bands, distinct but close to one another. You can find a further account of haemoglobin electrophoresis in the Dacey and Lewis Practical Haematology text.